श्री राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवा सादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा so his grace santosh pro no, needs no introduction among the youth because all of you know him anybody is there who doesn't know antar pro maybe uh, tirupati devotee and no, that he knows <laughs> <laughs> so we're very fortunate to have his grace santosh pro so pro ji is uh, like our elder brother mentoring uh, all the brahmacharis especially voice preachers brahmacharis in uh, pune so we are longing for his association and proji suddenly made his plan to come to bangalore to give his association so very very grateful so proji has done a uh, lot of wonderful service in youth preaching uh, in assisting his grace radhesham pro so being a uh, engineering degree holder from iit kharagpur uh, proji joined uh, iskon pune in 2008 uh, at that time i just graduated and i was working in pune and i was fortunate to be with proji in pune temple kunjbhari temple old temple so when proji had joined uh, pdc at that time and it was very inspiring to see proji that despite is to always have this head, headache but despite that headache the proji took such determination chant hari krishna and also do preaching and So, and later on when i also actively joined voices in preaching in uh, pune then i also got to uh, closely associate with prabhu ji and learn a lot from him and later on during brahmachari life uh, we got even more close association in nscc uh, pune temple uh, in uh, doing voice services so, and prabhu ji is a great hand of his grace radhesham pro anything has to be done prabhu ji uh tells to antari bro and antari bro tells to all the devotees and executes the services so and it is difficult because there are hundreds of ideas which radhesham bro has uh, but antari bro uh, very dedicatedly he tries to fulfill the desires of prabhu ji and uh, prabhu ji also has lot of responsibilities in pune temple uh, temple itself and prabhu ji also is uh, leading a new bhakta training which is called as pdc personal development course and then uh, <clears throat> proj is well known for his very deep lectures on the concept of bhakti service attitude and dedication to spiritual master and spiritual preceptors <clears throat> and uh, we are very fortunate now <laughs> so proj had come here 5 years back and uh, after long time proj has visited here for a short visit so very very grateful welcome proj to here is gone south bangalore by chanting once hari krishna mantra hare krishna hey krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so this class was originally intended for youth boys working devotees and uh, uh, student devotees surat but today his grace narari chetana guru he said why not open it all the leaders so the temple devotees so a uh, few temple devotees are joined on zoom also the temple leaders hari krishna hari krishna so i am very honored privileged and fortunate to be here i have always heard from his grace radhesham prabhu very wonderful glories of uh, the devotees here he always says about the congregation here that no all the leaders are so pakka for all the training programs which rajeshpur comes here all of them are just so pakka in trying to attend all of them very sincerely uh, make notes and ask questions and so you are seeing that there is a great vibrancy in all the devotees uh, i think prabhu used to call rajeshpur sundarup shambu 
Uh, it's moving right. Yeah. Okay. So Rajeshampu used to get calls and you know, Prabhu would fix first Bangalore visits. The rest of the visits were pending, you know, because he was seeing enthusiasm, that and deep desire to learn and make a wonderful Sangha here. So he is very, very appreciative of the Sangha here, of all of the devotees. And <coughs> it's our fortune that somehow um, we could send some support to his grace, Narisha Tripu, in some kind of offering as an assistant in form of Suman Gaurai Prabhu, Suman Prakash Prabhu, and Ban uh, Mali Prabhu, now Karna Murthy Prabhu has joined them. <laughs> Actually, they are also very wonderful Vaishnavas. And, uh, we miss them, but I think uh, it is uh, Lord Jagannath's call to have their service here, and we are very um, proud of them in their dedication to Shri Prabhupada. And I, as a some kind of a poor servant, I'm here today to share something which I've learned from my seniors. So we'll do this workshop, Inner Transformation. And the main workshop is to be done here for me but uh, as i do this workshop many times i get some help for myself so i am selfish in my attempt <laughs> but if it benefits you all also it's my great joy so i a little bit feel concerned that you are all, already you have attended it from radha shampu and maybe many other seniors but you are attending so maybe if you wish to no, have you may have your services also from you can <laughs> they are attending out of courtesy you know, loving gesture of us Vaishnava. <laughs> so you have this booklet, Prabhu Bhakti Parishan that inner transformation that okay. So all of us are looking for some transformation in life. And that is actually uh, what bhakti should really bring. Bhakti, if it doesn't really bring transformation or any process that doesn't really bring any transformation in our life for the positive, then there is some problem either in the process or with our application of the process. So bhakti is for the ultimate transformation to make us blissful, eternally blissful souls. So uh, many times devotees have a question that how to know whether we are making progress or not? You know? What can be different measures of our progress? So here from different sections of Srila Prabhupada purports or Srila Prabhupada disciples dealings with Prabhupada or Prabhupada speaks out, Prashanku has compiled a couple of them to help bring out certain features that we should assess ourselves with so you can so the first section which is you know from this verse till the you know, where you say individual comprehension exercise this is the first section which will talk about one kind of uh, measurement scale bhakti paresha anubhavo virakti anyatra chaisa trika eka kala so by bhakti one should get three types of transformations and he compares it to tushti pushti shuddha payo nuhasam just like when we eat prasadam we get taste in the tongue and satisfaction on the belly and strength in the body. Similarly, when we taste bhakti, we should get taste for activities of devotional service. We should get satisfaction of the heart, so we should not anymore be looking forward to looking up, looking out for certain material things. And we should get the strength. That means we should be very eager to preach. And if we preach, like if there is strength in the body, and someone punches, so that teeth will break. Similarly, if someone has strength or devotional service, when he preaches, it transforms others' hearts. So these are three very wonderful principles that here are encapsulated in 11.2.42.
devotion, direct experience of the Supreme Lord, and detachment from other things. These three occur simultaneously for one who has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the same way that pleasure, nourishment, and relief from hunger comes simultaneously and increasingly with each bite for a person engaged in eating. So, you see, um, in devotion service, these three are very important measurements, taste, satisfaction, and strength. So, what all things we look forward to have taste in? Of course, one taste is like the higher taste, you know. <laughs> Go in the, the prasadam. That's the first love for every devotee. <laughs> so, that is there. But uh, what more we look forward to? There's nothing wrong to have nice taste for prasadam that we can have. It's, it's Krishna, you know. He's Krishna. <laughs> what more we look forward to? Taste. What all taste we want to have? Huh? Ah, taste in chanting the holy name. Hmm? So like, uh, there is a beautiful verse by Rupa Goswami. Hmm? So that verse, he says about taste in two ways. One, one verse says about the taste you caught. And one says, if you don't get taste, then what you should do? So the verse which says about taste, he says, Tunde tandavini ratam vitunate tundavali labdhaye Karna krodha kadambini ghatayate Karna budhepya spriham Cheta prangana sangani vijayate sarvendriyanam kritim Nujane janita kriyati amritai krishne tivarna dvai So he's saying this stool syllabus Krishna has so much nectar that I desire you know, thousands of tongues and millions of you know ears and when it enters my heart you no, know, it captures my heart and I become completely aloof from the creation. So that is one verse which is about all taste, you know, millions of tongues. You know? But we have one tongue and that also feels very difficult, you know, you know? sometimes difficult to chant. You know? So the, for that, what he has given in the nectar of instruction, Syat Krishna Nama Charita Di Sitapte Vidya Pitop Tatapta Rasanasya Narochikanu Kintu Adarat Anudinam Kalushaiva Jushta Swadvi Krama Bhavati Tad Gadamun Hantri. So there he says that actually our taste, uh, our taste, sweet taste is tampered when we have jaundice. So when we have teeth of taptas, no? when we have pitta, jaundice, so when, then sweet also tastes bitter. Huh? But one should still go on tasting sugar cane. Then what will happen? We will get cured and then we will taste it sweet. Similarly, go on tasting kintu adharat anudinam kalushai vajushta. So work hard every day with great respect, chant the holy name and then eventually we will be cured. And then we'll have the taste which was recited in the first verse. You know? So he gives hope for us also. You know? So that is about taste in chanting. Like that we also want taste in reading, tasting, associating with devotees. Actually, taste in chanting, reading, all this is bhajan. You know? So in the, in the stages defined by... Shula Vishnu Chakati Thakur in Madhuri Kadamni. First comes Adho Shraddha, then Sadhu Sangha, then Bhajan Kriya. How many of you have done something in that regard? Madhuri Kadamni, some seminar? Okay, one. Okay, yes. So in the Madhuri Kadamni, when it comes to Sadhu Sangha, uh, it means that we feel very, very eager to attain, you know, attain the association of devotees. And in that association, we develop the Bhajan, you know. So if someone is not able to have taste for bhajan, but taste for bhajan is actually ruchi, you know. But before taste will come, uh, stability, nishtha. Nishtha means stable bhajan, you know. So uh, when we look for taste in some devotional activities, that is called ruchi. And when we have taste in the 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 Lord's Namrup Girgun Lila. That is called uh, asakti. No? So these two are, are, are attained after nishta. No? So it is very important that before we uh, look for taste, we should be ready to pass the test. No? And the test is that even if we don't have taste, 
we will do it with great enthusiasm and that enthusiasm is born out of our sincere desire to to conform to the will of guru and krishna or i should say guru and shastra because vaidhi sadhana bhakti means what vaidhi sadhana bhakti means to do obligatory devotion service with contaminated mind and senses and it is done on the order of guru and shastra guru and shastra has said my mind is saying so many things like someone may be giving a lecture and we say oh he is giving a basic lecture you know or he is you no know, or some reading also same thing prabhupad is telling you know sometimes but actually all this is coming because we have not got taste so do it kintu adarat anudinam you no know? so this is because we have not got the real access so on the mental platform we accept and reject based on our mental perceptions which has nothing to do with actually the spiritual potency of that particular spiritual item so when we have faith on the spiritual master and the shastra and we know this is actually sweet nectar and what i am looking for what looks nectar sense gratification is very nectarian but in case we go on with that we will lose the game so we know that we have to consciously avoid what is looking like nectar because it's poison it's nectar in the beginning but poison in the end but bhakti is apparently poison in the beginning because there is tapasya because we have to do it against our mind and senses and then as we go on doing it day after day day after day then we actually attain nishtha actually nishtha stage is attained when see first is sadhu sangha then anishtita bhajan kriya then sadhu uh, then uh, anarth nivritti then nishtha so nishtita bhajan kriya so anishtita bhajan kriya means time and again when mind proposes we get pulled by the mind so there is a vector of don't do this don't do this from the mind and the intelligence saying do it do it it's good for you or the guru and shastra basically are saying do it do it so when the vector this vector is so strong that let's do it you know let's give it up that means we are getting pulled by the mind and that is basically the anarthas the anarthas are pulling us from doing the act which is actually good for us which is defined by guru and shastra's instruction so when we consistently do it having faith that is why sadhu sangha and the shraddha in the sadhus becomes the very basic foundation to step over from anishtita bhajan to nishtita bhajan and when nishtita bhajan comes then we do it what come what may even if the mind is pulling 100 vector there is a 101 vector here to say karega so bad you know <laughs> so we do it at any cost then the anishtita bhajan kriya has become nishtita now krishna sees he has passed the test then he gives ruchi so till that devotee keeps saying give me taste then i will do it he says forget it no but when you say i will do whatever come may you may give me mercy or not i will follow guru then krishna says okay let me see when krishna satisfies us sometimes we do it for one week and then we say prabhu aapne kuch kiya hi nahi no you didn't do anything no it is not that we should give our certificate krishna should give certificate that now he is a pakka man you know so when he gives certificate that you are pakka i am pakka then he will give me taste so we have to patiently you know utsahat nishya dhairyat so these three are very important to work with there should be confidence in the process of devotion service and with enthusiasm we should carry it out and we should not become impatient you know we are carrying out with enthusiasm sometimes there is enthusiasm to carry out but then we want quick result you know, devotee takes a vow and then he says if i take this vow then in one year i should overcome this problem no but that may not happen we should be enthusiastic in our endeavor but patient for the result sometimes we are restless for the result and very patient with the endeavor <laughs> so then it will not work <laughs> so so krishna's mercy in our endeavor so the idea of uh, bhajan kriya becoming stable is founded on sadhu sangha becoming stable so it is very important for us to develop taste for sadhu sangha before we develop taste for bhajan kriya so taste for sadhu sangha will keep us stable in sadhu sangha and then we will become stable in 
bhajan kriya and then we will have taste in bhajan kriya no so if we like sometimes devotees go home or some difficult place and then they will prabhu saab you know bhakti thanda ho gaya no now it is not working prabhu nothing hare krishna krishna no no so it's very tough to chant and that is natural in the condition existence we are not uh, aridas thakur who can just chant all the day long without any association to so we should know we cannot exist without association to prabhupad said that if someone thinks he can work without association to devotees in devotion so he is insane hmm? so if you have not developed this conviction that i am a product of mercy i am living in devotion service because of association to devotees and i feel homesick if i go away from association to devotees then i have to be very concerned to not leave that association otherwise my bhajan kriya is anyway going to go out and some or the other if we lose bhajan kriya because of any situation say now in covid period some devotees went home and you know they are not to be found lost and found you know some they calling hari bol hari krishna but then picking only but some are picking and saying prabhu now i am done you know so this is happening it's painful so it's very important for us to appreciate in our personal life that at any cost come what may i may have done biggest blunders in my life in bhakti but i will never leave the association of devotees ye sab chhodat kahi nahi jaau ye sab chhodat pran haram pran har jaye lekin main bhakti ke sang ko nahi chhodunga we have to get this deep conviction that ultimately whatever be the case let me be in the sangha of devotees let me be fool in front of devotees proved a fool prabhu ho gaya mera halat kharab you know but let me not be fooled by maya let me not be slaughtered by maya so what maya devi proposes sometimes is oh prabhu see you are not able to follow you are not pure you cannot associate with devotees you are you better no now see if you go to devotees they will what will they think about you how will you face these devotees better you don't go no and basically what is she saying you don't give up just bhajan you give up sadhu sangha also get lost you know no very nicely she is preaching to us and giving such krishna conscious arguments you know, or whatever some kind of you know special ideas and then she nicely slaughters the jiva after he is alone what will happen like sometimes when we have not taken the medicine which the doctor is given you know what happens you know how many of us feel sometimes after not taking the medicine which the doctor gave we feel less, little hesitant to go to the doctor also again you know it has happened with you it has happened many times you know <laughs> so we feel we doctor ko jaake bole bhi kya no i have not taken the medicine only so it will not obviously my i have not cured but now if i don't go i am not cured anyway you know so what we have to do you have to go to doctor you know so if you are not feeling like a sociability that means we even more need the sociability so actually initially we have to develop intellectual conviction then we should also develop a spiritual connection with the superiors with the spiritual masters great souls in such a way that we feel attached to them and there should be a open hearted relationship with the vaishnavas that sadhu sangha gives us a, such a shelter that like whatever we are this is my home and that is the point where we become stable that in this life at least we we'll remain with devotees so that means sadhu sangha has become stable platform after that we will talk about bhajan kriya so all this taste in reading hearing chanting all that gets lost if there is no taste in association of devotees so that is most important all the great souls after attaining love of god they say yeah, we need association devotees so because in that we can on a continued basis hear the wonderful glories of the lord there is a beautiful verse in the fourth canto 4911 uh, bhakti bhakti mohu pravatam tvai me prasanga and there it says a continuous nectar of devotion service flows in the association of pure devotees so we should look for this sometimes devotee say prabhu like now in covid some prabhu i am doing my bhakti in my work in home also you know i am talking about like voice devotees they say 
प्रभु वॉइस आने का भी जरूरत क्या मैं सोलह माला कर रहा हूँ आई एम डूइंग माई सिक्सटीन नॉन्स एट होम नो सो इट लुक्स लाइक एज एफ सेम बट इट इज नॉट एट ऑल द सेम The very fact that he thinks his bhajan kriya is very safe without the sangha devotees, that means something has gone wrong. Because the science is science; it works as it is. You know? So we have to really understand the science and know how it works, and then we should apply it ourselves to that science very powerful, properly. So that is the first point about taste. Then comes satisfaction of the belly. Taste tongue pe satisfaction. What does it compare to? we have satisfaction in the heart that ho gaya i don't need anything in this world now i am very satisfied to get the association of devotees i am very satisfied to be in devotee sangha we feel satisfied in devotion service so in this regard also what type of satisfaction can we expect in the sadhaka stage can we expect that there won't be any material desire so there will be material desires but you will see lot of reduction also how many of you feel that you know a lot of thing has reduced also no in our you know material desires have substantially reduced are every day you are singing na dhanam na janam na sundarim you know imagine before coming to krishna every day dhanam janam sundarim no no and now reverse gear na dhanam na janam na sundarim and sometimes we are even singing ashlishyava padratam pinastuma imagine krishna takes it very seriously No. <laughs> so we are singing very high five verses can you imagine singing such a verse before coming to krishna consciousness so actually our aspirations have become very very dramatically changed but we may be walking a journey of our own towards that aspiration and we may be very far from attaining that but the very fact that your aspiration has changed to pure devotion service you want to go back to god is like a very very rare thing in this creation how many people are like this those who are singing na danam na janam na sundarim you know in this whole bangalore tell me how many what is the population of bangalore ha huh? one and a half crore how many devotees in icc bangalore ha huh? i am talking very grossly ha huh? huh? 300 devotees okay let us count sjm icc and slnt right we have three temples mainly total strength 1500 1.5 1. crore 1500 what is the ratio ha huh? huh? ha you are the rarest souls in the creation prabhu you can understand 0.001 ha huh? <laughs> what something like that you know <laughs> it's 1.5 crore you know so maybe you have to make your calculation so 1000 1500 lakh hai na 1500 lakh so one in one lakh so you are one in one lakh amazing no so this sangha is very wonderful that you are meeting with those who are like luck in one lakh people one person rare soul actually that's also a better ratio if you little bit extend your logistics statistics to the world you know you will get really you will get proud about yourself are mai bahut hi badhiya aadmi hu so so like krishna chaitanya jan bhu would say if you become depressed about your devotional service that wo kya ho raha hai then look back how far you have come and you feel proud look ahead and see how far you have to go no? No? simple you know? so what i was sharing is that we have got a lot from krishna and we should be very grateful for that so much can you count some of the blessings that you have received from krishna just quick 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 brainstorm yeah we have got such great association of devotees no prasadam okay holy name services to krishna scriptures shuddha bhakti scriptures no the rarest jewel of all yeah deities to serve gurudev yes kirtan so many mercy fact actually it's like a whole abode of mercy prabhupada just brought us all the places so we should always ruminate ruminate on these wonderful mercy blessings that we have got even in that we can think of you know how it was shila prabhupada senapati bhakta because if before that if we had taken birth i think it will be very difficult to 
catch on you know but after prabhupad then there was a first generation but even the first generation faced a lot to stabilize the movement we are just at the right time you know when the first generation has stabilized the movement and making it also easy for us to understand how to serve shila prabhupad surrender to prabhupad and surrender to the will of prabhupad through the gbcs and everyone so it's like too much no is it too much of a coincidence that just 500 years back lord chaitanya appeared and then senapati bhakta and then the first generation and then i came you know it's like too good you know so let me just see you know if i'm dreaming you know so we should always count on our blessings that itself will bring us satisfaction and then surely bhakti also gives the satisfaction where we don't look forward to any more material things actually that is going to come but it will come gradually as the anarthas go down this will naturally come and that is actually in ishta stage in ishta we get freed from the anarthas primarily more or less and thus we get filled with bhakti you no know? so we should be happy in that you no know? and if you are more and more than you like yamuna chare is saying that i spit at the thought you know so you get disgusted you know you just don't feel like doing anything so that is about satisfaction and strength strength is about strength of the body is not like you know we should get some muscle power in the gym but we are talking in the spiritual sense strength in our bhakti to transform other hearts so if we are having true strength in our bhakti then whatever we share with others will also feel make them connect to krishna and take shelter of krishna more if we are taking shelter of holy name more then we will be able to transfer that shelter or i, I should say share that shelter no we cannot give something that we are not having no can i give you something that i don't have no <laughs> i can't give you something if i don't have it so if we have faith in the shelter of the bhakti principles like the holy name shrimad bhagavatam the dts the spiritual masters and so many then only we can transfer that faith so the faith is the wealth of a vaishnava and the strength of a vaishnava so it is very important for us to no it's fine it's fine it's very important for us to assess whether our preaching is uh, uh, only lip service or coming from the heart when we feel true joy in bhakti then we'll surely like to share it with others if we don't feel like sharing like sometimes when we go for hari naam so some new boys sometimes feel like oh no one should see me i'm dancing with these hari krishna fellows you know <laughs> because he's little more conscious of his body than the soul you know no if a devotee is ecstatic he'll say puri duniya ko bata dunga i'll tell the whole world i'm a devotee of krishna are tum bhi bano what are you doing you come out to you know and do something for krishna you know take this book hare krishna hare krishna take this hari po i know he's like <laughs> some may call him crazy but he's actually you know, happy <laughs> no so it's very important you know that we have a great joy to share this message not like we are feeling shy in sharing this message so there is a great joy in sharing there is a eagerness to share there is commitments we want to do that you know that prabhupad you did so much for us now we would like to share this message further and when we actually share we should be able to transform hearts like one time one devotee was giving dvs sessions discover self sessions so he said radhishampu said you are not the body but the soul you know so so but what do you say sir <laughs> so it's true that radhishampu said in the dvs session but you know sometimes we quote shastra like that but the point is that we should also have some conviction in the principle and also at least 20 to 25% something we should be also working towards it we should have achieved trying to do it no not that we are not doing anything on it and then we are telling everyone else you no know? like if i say please don't smoke cigarette bro please don't smoke cigarette ha huh? thoda no it's not going to work if i am smoking cigarette so it's not going to work so the point is if we are working hard in our devotion service it has to naturally give us the shelter of the limbs of devotion devotion service is so perfect it has to give us that shelter no krishna krishna is just eager to give us shelter so why will he not give us shelter if we are looking for it so when we get the strength then we will be able to transform others 
so uh, these are three principles that come out in this particular section the next verse is actually talking about the ecstasy that comes we'll just recite it and move ahead tadashmasaram hridaye tadashmasaram hridayam vatedam yadriyamanai hari naam dheyai na vikrieta yada vikaro नेत्रे जलम गात्र रुहेशु सेइंग दैट माय हार्ट इज सर्टेनली स्टील फ्रेम्ड ही इज नॉट सेइंग स्टोन हार्टेड बिकॉज ही नोज इन वृंदावन धाम इवन स्टोन मेल्ट्स व्हेन कृष्णा प्लेस फ्लूट सो ही कैन नॉट कॉल इज हार्ट एज स्टोन स्टोन हार्टेड यूजुअली पीपल कॉल स्टोन हार्टेड बट देन स्टोन हार्टेड इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क बिकॉज कृष्णा स्टोन्स मेल्ट so steel frame that bit in spite chanting the holy name of the lord with concentration it doesn't change so that means i am doing aparad that's the point so we'll go ahead any questions till now this is the first section we discussed after this comes another principle of of course the title is ashirwad maharaj the title is very ecstatic one but there is another principle here yes no taste will not go away but we are away from the sangha yeah. so we have to it's called like we should carry like we carry water in sponge and then we are squeezing the sponge and using the water but once the sponge water is gone then we need again to dip it so we need to know that we need sangha regularly to keep ourselves juicy actually what i'll do uh, if this time comes i will go and i will do another sangha like that i will take it to see I go. Is that right, Mantis? I could could not catch fully. If I ah huh, now it's coming. If I go home, so I don't have sangha. So I feel like uh, so if this date will come, then I will go to uh, the association. So like that, I will think on that conscious only. Is that right, Mantis? He goes home and he thinks that. Okay, at this date I'll come back. I'll take association again, so that I'll not become weak. Yeah. So we should have a plan, and we should also know our stamina. You know, like sometimes our devotees they go home. I am talking about some students. So when they go home, they are saying that, uh, you know, Prabhu, summer vacations have come, so I'm going home. Yes, you should go home. So how long you are going? This Prabhu, I'm going for two months. Oh, two months. Who won't it be too long, Prabhu ji? What to do? A little bit. I want to go. No, mummy is calling. You know, okay, Prabhu. But I feel you should go there for a week or so, and then come back. You can do some nice things here, and you know, services, and you can also learn some skills here only, and be in the sangha. Mm, no, Prabhu ji. No, no. Okay, Prabhu ji. Don't want to know. And like that, they go. And after one week, you call them. No, Prabhu, I am chanting, but little, no, lacks. and then after one month hari bol hari bol hari bol you know? <laughs> and then he comes back after two months hari bol ho gaya prabhu ji you know <laughs> now i am done with you know i am not i was not chanting for so much time and i fell down this way i fell down that way you know so then you know i you say okay prabhu so what did you learn as a lesson no problem you have come back jaan bachi so lakho bhai lot ke buddhu ghar pe aaye you know you came back no problem now what did you learn you tell me prabhu ji i should not go home you told me earlier no and the next time you go the next winter holiday prabhu how long you are going home prabhu ji one month prabhu ji you no know? are you told you know last month what you said you know you remember so the person doesn't learn the lesson only you know so some amount of kicks maya gives then he understands how much is his time and i know even as brahmacharis when we go home we actually face difficulty in terms of not keeping the same enthusiasm that we have when we are in the sangha so it's just so natural in the sadaka stage jai shri shri jagannath bade subhadra mai lakshmi narsingh dev gornitai shilapopad ki jai in both the temples i have been still trying to count all the details actually <laughs> in the morning i was there i was trying to say jai 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 and there were so many details i just <laughs> by the end of the parda closing i was <laughs> so yes So I was just sharing that we should know our stamina, 
and thus we should fix an appropriate amount of time only we can go more frequently but only that much that we can last that way and as a grihastha as you are grihastha it may be a little different situation you may also make your own home place vibrant with more devotion service i am speaking in the session more from devotees who are from voices and working phase without before marriage why because many of them they are not in the place where they can change home situation very seriously but because they are in a place where they have to just be there and they can't really tell mother father also that you please do like this or do like that so it becomes a little difficult to make home situation is very devotional at master then they are like kind of surrounded by maya and then they are trying to scope up with trying to be krishna conscious so that's where i was trying to come from is that understandable so yeah we go ahead okay so the next super, next is your exercise you have to read so this is a very nice uh, portion you read through maybe in pair you can read through so that we remain focused instead of attending to any phone calls and then after that you answer the eight questions which are there at the end so you write in pen and then we'll discuss so the time given by radhishampu there is 20 minutes i don't know whether for discussion also <laughs> i think i can give you 15 minutes you try to okay we read it loud it will be faster okay we'll read it loud maybe para by para will go so that there is some change <laughs> and then we'll answer the questions okay read please Samal Krishna Maharaj went out to wash and swiftly shut the door behind him. When he came back to sit, he sit, sidled through the sidled through the half open entry and again quickly shut it. There was three men hanging around in the corridor, hoping to see Prabhupad. He said, answering our quiz, quizzical looks. they will just come in and ask some nonsense nonsense and disturb him so don't let him let them come in people in india are often eager to ask for blessings from holy men but unfortunately they rarely have any serious spiritual intent there there are also many sadhus accustomed to of, offering such meaningless aashirwad or blessings Shila Prabhupada refers to this kind of sadhu as an Ashirvad Maharaj. Usually, they give a wave of the hand, a nod, and exchange of few polite words. There is no spiritual discussion, no no transmission of knowledge, and no transformation. Yet, both parties are satisfied with their giving and receiving of they know not what Ashirvads. from our understanding of prabhat's teachings such intangible exchanges are of no practical value naturally as prabhat servants we don't like to see his time wasted with such blessing seekers when harikesh and i went out of the compartment the curious men were still there on our return despite our obvious reluctance to let them in they strained to see past us knowing that if they caught prabhupada's eye etiquette would be oblige him to let him let them in prabhupada was awake eye contact was made and he instructed us to let them in the three filed in and sat opposite smiling and pleased at having evaded the secretaries of someone they knew was a great spiritual leader and holy man thus we all sat we three somewhat irritated by this polite infringement on prabhupad's precious time the three in ignoring us eager to have this his darshan and shila prabhupad as always a warm and cordial host not at all inconvenienced prabhupad received them courteously asking them a few polite questions what their names were where they came from what they did and the like then he looked directly into their faces and asked so what is it that i can do for you 
Swami ji, we just wanted to get your blessing. What is that blessing? This answer took them by surprise. No one had ever asked them what kind of blessing. Court of God. One of them replied, Well, Swami ji, I have this pain in my knee. We almost groaned out loud, and the man, becoming embraced, actually had added, and for our families also, strike two. Oh, and of course, we want to do good for others. As he, as he trailed off into confused silence, Prabhupada indicated his three disciples with shaven heads, shikhas, kurtas, dhotis, and tulsi beads. He told them, this is my blessing. These boys have given up everything for Krishna's service and to chant Hare Krishna. Are you prepared to accept such a blessing? At first, there was no reply. They were stunned. All kinds of wild thoughts seemed to run through their heads and across their faces. Then before they could become the beneficiaries of this blessing, they hurriedly stood, once stammered, Well, actually, Swamiji, at the moment, we have so many duties with the family and all. This kind of life of sannyasi, for us, it is not possible. With profuse apologies and many thanks, they beat a hasty retreat. We, we laughed as Prabhupada sat smiling and shook his head. This, this is the problem. They simply take a sadhu as some means for avoiding paying the doctor's bill. That's all. Ashirvat Maharaj. They are not serious for spiritual life. People have no appreciation of real Mahatma. So this is taken from Transcendental Diary by Hari Shariku. Please uh, solve those questions. Hmm? The answers are mostly from the, the text itself.
Okay, I think we'll proceed. Huh? So the first question, what do people in India are eager and not eager to ask when they meet a sadhu? So you raise your hand and maybe the mic can come to that devotee. Yeah, who's raising a hand, please. Yeah. They are eager to ask some material blessings. Mm, they're eager for blessings, blessings, material blessings. And what they're not eager for? For taking any spiritual intake. Uh, they they're don't want any spiritual in instruction. Okay, good. And they don't want the real blessing, no? Of a sadhu. Okay, okay, good. What three intangible exchanges are of no practical value? No? Uh, okay, there, there. I say you, you, you had the mic with the raised hand. <laughs> no spiritual discu discussion, no transformation. No, that is a practical value. What are no practical value? Okay, okay, pass it on, bro. You can share that as the next chance. Waving hands in mode and exchange of few polite words. Uh, nodding, smiling, ashirvad, you know. Yes, big smile. So there are many sadhus like that, right? They don't speak any word. You know? No discourse. Actually, they don't have anything worthy to tell also. So they keep quiet, it's better only. Sometimes they speak nonsense, that is not so. Huh? But people in India, like Prabhupada was criticizing also the wrong people. They said, Are, so you are a sadhu and you are criticizing. That they cannot accept. And this Monratha fellow, who is speaking nothing but actually inside or nonsense he has, they will think he is a great sadhu. No? Oh, he is always smiling. Swamiji is always smiling. You know? No? 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 <laughs> yeah. So, like that, they misunderstand what is a real sadhu. Yeah. And we, we also travel, like in the saffron, when we travel in the trains, sometimes they want to debate. And this is, sir, up to Swami, they want gyan. And as soon as you start telling, they say some Mayavad philosophy from their side. And then you contradict it. They say, Are? no, asa nahi, asa hai. And then we speak a little extra, then they say, Are, aap argue bhi karte hai, aap khandan bhi karte hai, and then and then they say, Are, you're sadhu, you should be equi poised, equi minded. And they are raising their voice, and you raise your voice, they say, You are sadhu, you should keep quiet. You know? That means you speak nonsense and we will not quiet in you. you know? That is their idea. You know? So we should not debate with such people. We should just give them a book. If they want to really take some message, let Prabhupada speak to them. You know? <laughs> they have to be quiet only if they have to read the book. <laughs> they cannot speak nonsense. And we can move on with our study. You know? As soon as how many of you have found such time killers in the train? You know? Yeah. We should detect them very soon. Don't waste too much long time, you know. Are Swamiji, I have bad job, you know. They have free time like anything, and we have no time, you know. Yeah. So, so next one. What three ideal exchanges should take place when one comes to meet a sadhu? That's very important. Okay, there raise hand. Yeah. There is no spiritual discussion, no transmis trans. No three ideal exchange. You tell that. What? These are the ideal ones. You don't say no. <laughs> you say yes. Yeah. You write. Remove the no and tell what is. Uh, Okay, you can tell whatever you are saying. When, when, uh, when we meet the sadhu, then uh, these three kinds of uh, ideal exchange happens. Uh, there is a spiritual discussion and uh, transmission of knowledge and there is a transmission of power. Ah, so this is real trans this, this is real spiritual exchange. See, when we even go to Vaishnavas, how we deal with the Vaishnavas. You know, let me get the dust of Prabhu Maharaj. Maharaj ka dust mil jaya, no? See, Maharaj dust is surely powerful. Bhakta Pada Duli, Bhakta Pada Jal, Bhakta Abhishesha Pai, Tina Maham. Jagannath, Subhadra, Lakshminar Singh Dev, Gaur Nithai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Did I count all of them? 
jai so these three exchanges are very important whether we are having these exchanges or not sometimes we think that maharaj you know if we get some personal association of some master you know but what should the personal association do there were so many disciples of shilapu pad who got lot of personal association but are no no more anywhere doing anything for prabhu pad you know in fact they are lost from krishna consciousness also they were devotees who were hopping and jumping from one place to another where prabhu pad was going you know but after they after prabhu pad left they also left so what we take from the sadhu association is important so sadhu association means we want vani of the sadhu and we want to transform our life by that sadhu's vani like one person had come to propas lecture and he saw that most of the devotees are feeling you know and he said propad swami ji i saw your devotees 98% of the time they were sleeping he said for 2% time what they heard they have done so much you know they have shaven and red they have transformed their life so much you know they are doing they have dedicated their lives what you did by hearing 100% of my lecture you know you know no so if we are hearing but a close with a closed heart then there will not be any heart transformation so his one is bhakti ashavesh maharaj had come to pune so he was giving example that imagine there is you know there is a bottle of liquor and you dip it in yamuna hundreds and million of times but it just remains as it is only because you never open the lid so it is as it is no so unless the heart is open nothing will happen no so in our devotional service we should see with what quality are we coming to here actually shiksha from a person is only going to affect our heart if our hearts are having respect that is why tad vidhi prani patena is first pari prashna and seva is later because without pani pat there is no question of pari prashna and seva there is no question of descending mercy by seva there is no question of descending knowledge by pari prashna because heart has to feel genuine appreciation for the sadhu its spiritual stature not only uh, scholarship actually there can be another type of transfer like nowadays people are looking looking for motivational speaker youtube pe sun lenge bahut ko they want just some nice masala some special masala are ye aaj naya masala 5 5 piece 2 s you know so many types of masala formulas we can make but with the heart transformation happens when we have spiritual appreciation for the sadhu when we know that this person has great love for krishna and i want krishna from him krishna se tumara krishna dite para tumara shakti ache ami to kangal krishna krishna boli dhai tav pache pache so we should have such a vision towards the sadhu krishna se tumara you have got krishna krishna is the supreme lord but you have you are having krishna in your pocket you know <laughs> krishna says i cannot give myself but i am the monopoly of giving krishna is in the hand of the pure devotees krishna se tomar krishna dite par tomar shakti you can give krishna that is your shakti and i am kangal i have not a lesh matra of devotion but krishna krishna boli i want krishna and you can give me krishna dhai tava pache pache when we have a a you know i'm repeating you know from what i have heard from my master is uh, always radhanath maharaj when we are living in the spirit of a destitute beggar in front of the master we know that i am a beggar you have you seen a this destitute word is a little difficult one maybe you don't know no destitute like have you seen a beggar who has not eaten for three four days and you know did you see that that kind of beggar no so that's the point so you imagine we going okay aap bolo you know aap bolna hai no so it's like a he's giving a lecture after all he is supposed to give lecture and we are supposed to hear so then it will not transform heart when we are seeking with hunger then we have digestion for what we receive so hunger is also about we have hunger for the message we have faith in the master spiritual faith not mundane faith 
mundane faith is arising from his mundane qualities like this smiling fellow you know ashirwad fellow no criticism fellow you know all these kind of things are mundane things he can do some chamatkar you know actually is our faith coming from some chamatkar you no know? or it is coming from genuine spiritual understanding of how to see a sadhu you know? how can we detect a sadhu the so sadhu has to be detected by the nine symptoms that rupa goswami shares about a very advanced soul you know no he has got taste in the holy name he has got uh, taste for the holy dham he has got a great tolerance he has got you know virakti you know there are nine symptoms there are there are these ashtavikar which are also mentioned but then this can be cheated by many fellows those who are trying to make a drama but then he mentions some more nine which are actually cannot be copied they have to act on that internally and satisfied when they are they are those who are really tasting devotion service can do that so when we really meet a sadhu we should know he is a big big man actually he is the wealthiest man in the creation even if he is wearing a copy he is the wealthiest person <laughs> because he is actually having krishna with and when we get before him we should know all our scholarship all our you know achievements they are only as good if they are offered through this person in the in the lotus feet of krishna we need his mercy and if he says to krishna he is a good boy so then krishna says oh you told who who you told this boy do you know what all he did are you know in this life he did this no i know he is a sincere boy bas krishna tum bol raha na chalo le leta hai no so the devotee of the lord um what is that beautiful song vishnavera avedana krishna dayamoy when vishnu vishnu put the appeal before the supreme lord so we should know that we want the mercy of guru and we have to have spiritual faith in the guru not some superficial idea that mercy de do mercy de do <laughs> that mercy de do style is very much prevalent in india that is what these fellows that come for ashirwad chahiye maharaj ma ji no so thoda ashirwad so sometimes even in iskon movement that is the idea you know many times people hang around their own spiritual master only they cannot hang around other sadhus thinking that other sadhus must be some new fights only no that means they have only faith in their own spiritual master but after the spiritual master is not on the planet what will they take shelter of so we have to have deep shelter in the vani of shila prabhupad our own spiritual master and the family that shila prabhupad created and in that sangha we should genuinely then take uh, uh, shelter of both the vani and the seva we should love to serve the vaishnavas and not just the great souls but all the levels of different levels of vaishnavas and receive their blessings and then we will actually have a transformation of heart so spiritual discussion knowledge trans knowledge transmission will happen when there is a spiritual discussion and then there will be a transformation of heart like shila prabhupad when he met shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur first time and he told that but how can we have lord chaitanya's message propagated unless we are free so what did shila bhakti nand thakur said lord chaitanya's message can no wait for no one it has it is it is of you know utmost importance for you now and one fellow will come other will one will go other will come but this is most important and when bhakti nand thakur shared in very proper way shila prabhupad felt defeated and was very proud to be defeated his heart was transformed this is spiritual life this is sadhu association so if we associate with sadhu jai shila prabhupad ki jai if we associate with sadhus and after that we go back and we are like kind of unaffected that means maybe we didn't really associate well so that is uh, you know you can see so many examples even prabhupad so many devotees actually like prabhupad when he meet amrish when he met amrish prabhu first time just four words where is henry ford thar he finished his mater life in four words 
can you imagine the power of see spiritual master as ukti ukti means he can cut the knots of illusion through his vani so where is henry ford made him understand all his material achievements are zero no khatam henry ford is gone all his wealth is here only so i will also be gone and i will be here only so better i use everything for krishna finish he surrendered his life to krishna prabhu this is spiritual association sadhu association so if we are of course we may not have always got to you know one eureka experience that you know when will i get that sadhu jiske samne baitha to third se kuch ho jayega sometimes people look for some magical you know ek hi baar mein sab khatam you know you know no it's a ongoing thing also he said one day and then after that also we have to do all that journey also you no know? so it's like when we associate with sadhus actually they are having a very powerful spiritual uh, devotion that is exuding from their consciousness through whatever they say what is that beautiful shloka sautama shloka huh? sorry uh, mahan mukhachat uh, what does it say नहीं सौतम श्लोक महान मुखच्युत भवत्दाबोज सुदकनाल अविस्मृति स्मृति स्मृति पुनर् विस्मृति तत्वर्तमना कुयोगिना वितरतलंबर सारी आम फॉर्गेटफुल बट वट इट बेसिकली मीन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट so uttama shloka the uttama shloka the choices poetry being recited by the mohan mukhachat which comes out of the lotus mouth of the great souls actually carries the saffron dust particles from the lotus feet of lord krishna and can revive the forgetful living entity to his original consciousness of a loving servant of krishna who will not take shelter of such a wonderful man so this is the greatest benediction that comes by the association of the sadhu and this transformation is what is real transformation so we should look forward for real sadhu association and not otherwise okay what question of shila prabhu to the gentleman by surprise what is that blessing usually people would just say yes hamara aashirwad tumhare sath and they would move on and they also did not think the 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 person giving blessing and the person receiving blessing both are in ignorance no both don't know what is blessing no both need blessing from a real sadhu no yeah what three blessings one of the gentleman asked for <laughs> what three blessings he asked for where is the mic and no one is raising hand okay you are raising hand yes bro please give mic to Uh, first one was uh, like he wanted to get freed from his knee pain second mm-hmm. one was like uh, he wanted uh, same thing for his family and <laughs> third thing was uh, he wanted to do good for others uh, actually when he said knee pain he, he sounded eventually very selfish then he said let me extend my you know life you know? then he went to you know the family he said abhi bhi kuch zyada hua nahi you know <laughs> then he said we do good to others also you know he really didn't have any clue so people are very sentimental actually in the uh, indian world there are very sentimental people actually there are two types of shraddha laukik shraddha and shastra shraddha it's no time for discussing very elaborately on this to just principally share laukik shraddha comes from hearsay and shastra shraddha comes based on the foundation of shastra so when laukik shraddha is there then whatever is popular people want to do you know so like you remember oh maybe you were not born only in 94 or somewhere you know there was a time when ganesh ji started drinking milk you know so everyone started drink making ganesh ji get milk in the you know and everywhere in the world everyone was, and scientists were scratching their head how to get some spirit scientific clue on that you know so anyway one of our devotees in chopati mandir also was we had a ganesh you know in the at the door of chopati temple so he started he climbed with a ladder and he was trying to feed and shila radhanath maharaj was taking a walk you know <laughs> and he saw this devotee and he was having a good laugh and next day he was sharing that what is our faith is our faith coming from some pratyaksha praman 
and now today ganesh ji is drinking milk every day else other day does he don't drink you know patram pushpam phalam tayam yo me bhakte prachyati tadam bhakti rupa hritam ashnani ashnani so krishna eats every day and if we give any day krishna's remnants to ganesh ji he will also on but it's not going to happen like you know some viscous force should take the milk into the body of you know ganesh ji and then it will you will drink it actually all that thing is just external pratyaksh praman that people are looking for to get faith or sometimes in hindi movies it's more dramatic they say agar tu patthar nahi hai to agar tu no has no asli mein devta hai to and everything is moving you know ghantiya moving and the whole temple is moving and then some light comes out and something uh, some chamatkar hai you know <laughs> so people are looking for such blessing only such cheap things actually they don't have real clue to what is devotion life actually but prabhupada was looking going to give the real blessing what what was that what two things did prabhupada consider as his blessing okay Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Ah, uh, are you prepared for this? Oh my God, Sadhu Ji, <laughs> no danger. So, given up everything for Krishna means dedication. So when Shila Prabhupada preached, he evoked dedication from the heart of Vaishnavas. From the the devotees, can you imagine the three couples that Prabhupada told to go to London? They didn't have even money to enter London. They had to post back the money. One one couple entered and posted back the money to make the other couple enter. Then they posted back. Then the third couple entered, and they lived in cardboard boxes. They even had a child. You tell me. even today how many indian women will do this if they have a child with them in their hand that they will take such a dedicated measure to <laughs> serve their guru very very special dedication that they showed actually now they may be called hippies or whatever you know this is their dedication they were surrendered to will of prabhupada they were ready to take so much sacrifice no one knew them in england You know, you go to a god for second place. Of course, no place is for second by God, but then the word in English dictionary goes like that. But <laughs> the idea is that you go to a place where there's no one, you know, you don't, and there is always some threat also, and in that you are trying to preach Krishna consciousness. Or, his name is Bhakti Briyat Bhagwat Swami Maharaj says that missionary life means where you don't know where you next get the well, where we'll get the next meal. and where will you next get to sleep you know that is missionary life so living on the edge you know thoda hatke you know <laughs> so see when acharya prabhakar prabhupad preached to he didn't you know he would say i i feel like dozing when prabhupad was speaking on mission he was feeling like dozing and when sham sundar prabhu would get some mission you chase for the rhino no? <laughs> yeah so actually dedication comes out in form of dedicated service to prabhupada it's not just some some arbitrary just ex- internal i am very very devotional devotional what devotion if there's no dedication so many disciples of shri bhakti siddhant saraswati heard so much from bhakti ram tagore but prabhupada took it as a personal responsibility it is not that only prabhupada was told to go to the west practically bhakti ram tagore told everyone No, to do the needful for this, but it was Shri Prabhupada who took it very seriously as a personal responsibility to execute it. So, so now we are hearing also many instructions from many masters, and then who takes it? Like if you see Ramanuj Charya, he instructed everyone. Can someone go to Tirupati for making a pushpa mandap for? Because this is our alwars. They have given about you know Tirupati Balaji should have a. Mandap, you no, know, the 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 put, sorry, that flower, flower, flower garden, and all. Who took it up? Ananta. You know? So one person took it up. Everyone else was. He was not like me. I will go. Me will go. And then he has to take ina, 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 mo. You know? So many devotees are sitting in Shukde Goswami's assembly. Parikshit was hearing. There will be many, but Sutu Goswami was also hearing. It was not that Sutu Goswami was. 
you know, uh, sitting in front, you know, just beside Parikshit with a special attention, you know, he was sitting here only. You know, Malak, Shukdev Goswami was saying, he is my devotee, so he will sit here and thus I am giving him only discourse. He was one among the thousands of devotees, but he was hearing with that attention, that faith, that eagerness, that his heart was so transformed that he was empowered to speak in the Naimin Sharan. So, the dedication is something that comes out when we have a proper hearing process done. And then we will be change, changing our life to work for the mission of the master. If you see, you know, once um, Malti Mataji was cooking for Srila Prabhupada in Mayapur. <coughs> so Prabhupada told him, told her to cook every day. And Prabhupada would find every day one or the other fault. And then Malti Mataji was very, very concerned that I am not able to please Prabhupada. One day she worked very hard to make every item just to perfection. You know? And then she brought it to Prabhupada. And then Prabhupada said, see, today there is too much salt. You know where? That salt which we put on the side in order to add? Prabhupada said, this is too much salt. And you know, Malti Mataji did not think that what? Prabhupada is criticizing this? No. Is it proper? No. Imagine that would be our reaction. You know, what is this? You know, after working two, three hours, you know, you are getting this only. And you know how she was working? She's a foreign bodied lady. She had to go in the hot summer in rickshaws and boat to the Navadip Dham, get sabji, get cheated by all the sabji wala, boat wala, bargain, everything, and then come back in the hot Mayapur summer, you know, Mayapur summer. In the summer in Mayapur, in the kitchen cooking for hours together and getting it before Prabhupada and Prabhupada's criticized. Anyway, she thought, I did everything which I could have done, but I think I cannot please Prabhupada. So maybe I should change the devotee who should cook for Prabhupada. Tomorrow I will find out some. And then Prabhupada told tomorrow some sannyasi God brothers of mine are coming. You should cook this, these items. And she said, okay, this is last time. After that, I'll change. And then she cooked everything and she brought it to Prabhupada. And all the disciples, all the sannyasi godbrothers. And as she was serving, Prabhupada said, you know, every day she cooks for me. And if you know the usual, what do we call, social convention in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, if a Mataji is cooking for a sannyasi, it's a little awkward. You know? But Prabhupada was bold to say, she cooks for me every day. And I criticize her every day. You know? But she can slit her throat for me and I can do the same for her. No? She fainted there only, you know, she could not. No? Oh, that was the reciprocation Prabhupada was always having. Prabhupada knew their, their devotees, are, his devotees are giving their lives. They've given every drop of their blood in service to him. And he was ready to give that way too. You know, his name is Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. He, when devotees are not able to get any clue of how to purchase the land in Mayapur, Prabhupada told, call Tamal. You know? When there would be a difficult problem, which no one can solve, call Tamal. And then Shri Prabhupada told Tamal Krishna Maharaj, go to Mayapur. And he personally packed like a belt, you know, lakhs of rupees, which is very, very big in that time, 1970s. You know? And then he went and overnight, he talked to so many Muslim people. And made so actually so much land, you know, we got. It is impossible to get, you know. And night overnight, he made all the contracts. Came back to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was in great tension because they can he can be killed also in that situation. And he came, he bought down Prabhupada. Prabhupada, the land is yours. Very nice. Go now. You can take rest. You know? This is dedication. You know? Working hard to make Srila Prabhupada priest. Not just, you know, like now we can say, Hari Bol, Tamal Krishna Maharaj ki jaya, you know. So one time, like this one devotee was saying, Prabhupada has done everything, you know. No. We are just we are just basking in the sun of what Prabhupada did. And then Malti Mataji was sitting in the audience. She got up. No, Prabhupada has left many things for us to do. No. <laughs> now, he was speaking from the point of view of gratitude, Prabhupada. But she was speaking one more step ahead that don't just clap for what Prabhupada did. Go ahead to do something yourself. 
so sometimes we may also clap for oh what tamar gishmara did what devata kamara did what gopal gishmara did tak 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 but what about us that hum to chote hain hum kya kar sakte hain like prabhu told param puja devata kamara that no take sanyas but prabhu pad i am sim i am only 20 20 21 huh? 19 i don't know something like that you know and then prabhu pad said don't be in bodily consciousness you know anyway whatever be that age how many are about 21 yeah. imagine prabhupad comes and tells you don't don't be in bodily kind of takes any as you know it will be like bhavre bago we will be like this <laughs> this family man only you know <laughs> pack up you know <laughs> so it takes a lot to actually dedicate you know and we should see how we can increase our dedication to the master more and more and more prabhupad told one one person had come to prabhupad and he was saying uh, a uh, mr kumar who sometime lived in london temple visited prabhupad with many questions he wanted to work for his khan he said but required money to send his mother in india <laughs> he wanted to work for his khan and send the money to india for his mother no our men work 24 hours prabhupad said without a farthing mr kumar suggested ways to improve his khan the new devotees needed to study more he said especially sanskrit and become scholars prabhupad disagreed all we need is dedication he said i am not a great sanskrit scholar but i am pulling on and even the scholars say it is good my guru maharaj guru maharaj gorkeshwar baba ji maharaj was illiterate still his disciple bhakti siddhanta saraswati prabhupad was the greatest scholar of the day but when gorkeshwar spoke it was exactly from the shastra our principle is not to take time to learn something and become expert and then preach but whatever you know preach class in the morning class in the evening and if they have read my books that is sufficient you know so prabhupada didn't want big big scholarship prabhupada wanted dedication you know so that was the first and then chanting hari krishna of course so like that of course we'll just finish the last two questions are very simple ones yeah read what typical reason did those gentlemen give for not willing to accept propad blessing yes prove ah see i gave many grasta examples and mata ji example so that why i gave because we have to understand that it's not the case you know actually we have many wonderful in fact what to say in pun in in bangalore only we see narayi chatrapur and many wonderful vaishnavas here only how dedicated they are you know so everyone can dedicate his life one one should know how to live with faith and do the needful surely it's a life of sacrifice but one should know how to do it either as a brahmachari or as a grihastha disciple means dedicated no asmadate ati dukkita no when he said so sandapani muni saw the sacrifice of krishna and sudama he said for my sake you take, took so much of suffering so that is what we should see okay what was shila prabhu's estimation of those men in five words ah uh, they are not serious for spiritual life so those who the person who doesn't change his heart really dedicate his heart prabhu said these boys have shaven my head and they have dedicated their lives and chanting hari krishna they are wearing dhoti kurta tulsi beads so many people come as a well wisher you know so uh, i think here rajeshambu has shared on that no five stages beneficiary contributor dedicated committed dedicated and missionary he shared here no maybe tomorrow i'll say something on that we'll close here time is way up Thank you very much, Shila Prabhu Pad ki chaye. Okay. So that question was one question devotee has asked that if I am in the sangha, there may be some offence from me towards the sangha, and if I am out of sangha, I may fall down. So what should I do? So we should not fear offence so much that we don't take the sangha. We should try to be in the sangha and learn how to overcome the offences. That's simple. And we can't just avoid the sangha or devotees. and if we feel some particular devotee we offend very regularly then we can try to avoid that devotee's association and gradually build our bhakti shakti in such a way that we can associate with him also with love but we should not avoid totally the devotee sangha if you think all devotees are bad only 
then we can try to rectify ourselves in that regard. But we should remain in the sun. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. So we'll be continuing this topic tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Bhavatam class will be 8 o'clock to uh, 9 o'clock, but it may go a little extent to cover the topic. Hmm? Hare Krishna.